Well, it's been a journey since I last saw you. I said that it was going to be fun and there were going to be some changes made and we've done exactly that over the last seven months. Uh, the best way to describe Extreme Reach is that it's a legacy company that grew through acquisition over the last 20 years. And quite simply put, the last seven months, I've really been focused on assembling what I would consider my uh, Avengers team uh, to help us go win in the next chapter. Uh, more specifically, as you probably read in the news today, we announced Joe Kinsella as president of Source XR. That is our technology business that's solving uh, the creative workflow complexities that we're seeing today. I'll come on to that in a bit more detail in a second. And the second company that we're launching as well is called Spotlight by XR. And that again is delivering solutions for the content and production ecosystem. So tell us about the need for these services and, and how it could grow and you know, you have a very extensive background on the buy side. What's the appeal of XR? What do you hope to communicate with the buy side? So one of the things that in my industry is that you know, certainly many have tried to tackle, which is how do you bring the art and science of creative and media together in a meaningful way so that when you think about personalization at scale, you're really thinking about it through the lens of storytelling to the consumers. And I think I would say that I've been guilty of this you know, in the world of targeting, identity targeting, audience targeting. We've got a little bit obsessed with the ones and noughts and we've kind of forgotten a little bit of the art of personalization. So one of the things that actually really appealed to me about Extreme Reach, it has the largest catalogs of any ad that's been delivered in the world in one source of truth. And that is on our XR source business. So you imagine from that, the insights that we could garner at scale in every single market around things like representation in ads, uh, how ads are actually featuring able-bodied individuals, as we think about what business looks like in the future, whether you could use some of that metadata for optimization. All of these things we're exploring, uh, and, and Joel will talk a little bit more about later on. So tell us a little bit about um, reaching diverse audiences, and, and, and that's a challenge I'm sure that the buy side needs to solve, and you're helping them, correct? Well, it's easy to say that we're solving it. I think what we're trying to do is collaborate. So one of the things that we're doing is partnering with the ANA to provide some of these benchmarks that we have around DEI of, of the ads that we see in North America. And the intent there really is to collaborate, right? So we want to support the industry in moving forward. The idea is not to beat people with a stick and say, you're not doing as well as the other person. This is much more about how do we come together as an industry, embrace this data and make the, the changes so that there's more people that look like us on television. So tell us about some you know, trends you see for the coming year, and uh, both in your position as CEO and as someone who's been in the industry for a number of years. What, what do you think is exciting and what do you hope transpires? I think one of the amazing things about the conversation with diversity is really the act of inclusion and what brands, what companies are doing to stand up to take the act of inclusion. And as I look at brands questioning whether their ads are showing up in the right way today, I'm seeing the right questions being asked. Even things like neurodiversity or even accessibility, right, hearing and not hearing. These are some of the things that, that you would open up your access to these audiences that you haven't been reaching before. Less than 3% of our ads in the world is actually globally accessible today. How can that be? There's more than 3 billion people that are hard of hearing in the world today. So when I think about how we think advertising has been inclusive, actually has been rather exclusive for some time. And so seeing brands take action because they want to do better ads, they want to do better ads for people, is very encouraging.